Hi babies. I am um, before I hit the bed. I just wanted to apologize for how I ended last night's video. Even after all these years, it, it is very hard to talk about certain memories. Um, but I also wanted to make something um, very clear. I know that yesterday was a difficult video and on my, when I post things on my Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, um, sometimes, a lot of times, I post negative comments about um, my family and not not specifically to, to, to them to certain people I just mean how I've had to deal with everything alone um, I single out my mother a lot and that's for good reason I I would have never had to go through what I went through as a child if it wasn't if she had cared more um, and since I've been, since I, not recently, when I first started sharing my story within the last year, I don't hear from any of my family anymore. And I want you to understand if you're in a position like I am where you've either had to go through everything alone because you didn't have a supportive family or and or like me you lost whatever family if that's what you can call them that you have left or friends or people you care about because you are sharing your story because whether they are in on it whether they were there for you, whether they allowed it to happen, or even they just don't agree with you sharing it. Like, why are you making it public? It's not their fucking story. It's not their life. They didn't have to go through it. You did. I did. We did. And the only people that she could, should be concerned about us sharing our story is us. I share my story. I don't single people out, but my journey, what I've been through, if you're a part of that, whether good or bad, that's on you. That's not on me. But I'm going to share my story nonetheless because I don't ever want another human being to go through what I went through. And for those that have gone through it, I want them to know because for a long time, I know that other women had have been raped and assaulted and molested and abused as children and trafficked. But when you're, when you're abused, it's a very selfish feeling because you feel like the whole world is against you. Like, like no one has, because no one's been there for you, no one has ever been there for you, no one will ever be there for you, you are completely alone in the world. And I don't wish that feeling on anybody. That's why I chose to do this. Because I don't ever want another person to feel like they are alone in this. Because you're not. Yes, I have a lot of bad days. You know, I went through the last couple months before I wrote, before I started writing my book, I was angry. I was depressed. I had anxiety, but I was able for the most part to live my life day by day. It wasn't until I wrote my book that I have gone on that downward spiral. And, you know, that's when I finally got diagnosed with PTSD and depression and generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder. I already knew 
I had some of those things. The PTSD was really hard for me to take, but it made a lot of sense. It made a lot of things make sense. And I, I have gone downhill because of writing my book and remembering things and all those feelings and emotions that I have just kept so deep, so fucking hidden for so long. They came to the surface and it's like being re-traumatized all over again. So I'm having a really hard time right now. For the first time in 10 years, I've had suicidal thoughts. I would never do that to my son. But the thoughts are there and that was enough to scare the shit out of me. Because I swore to my child I would never do that again. I would never feel that again. And I feel like I failed him in a lot of ways. And my children, but my daughters don't talk to me. So my daughters are my fucking life. I have another son. He is my life. All my children are everything to me. But the ones that don't talk to me right now, okay, they're grown. Right now, I have my special needs eight-year-old son with me. And he has got to be my main focus right now because he is who I need to survive for. He's not a grown-up. He's not able to take care of himself. And he relies on me. And I'm not going to fuck up with him. So when I say I got to do this and that for my son, that doesn't mean I don't want to be better for my girls. That just means right now, Aislinn is my priority because he is just a little boy. With that said, I am going through a bad time, but I know that I will overcome it because I overcame it before. And especially now that I'm getting into therapy, I know that things will get better. But that's why I'm doing this video journal every night now because it's helping me and I'm hoping it is helping others. People are, are seeing it and people are are liking it, not just on YouTube. I, I get more comments and likes and stuff on Facebook. And I've even had a, I, I had two women who had suicidal thoughts and messaged me. And that's because they said I was helping them. That, that validated everything for me. That my story was reaching people and helping people. So my story, I will share every fucking day. And if you don't like it, don't fucking watch. My, as far as my family, I don't hear from them. So I could care less what they think. If they loved me and were there for me truly... They wouldn't go months and months and months without calling me and my son. They, they would wonder how I'm doing since I hadn't been on Facebook in forever. I haven't talked to my friends. Nobody. Not one person that knows me so fucking well thought to think after everything I've been through that something may be wrong. Let's call see how she's doing. Except one person, and that person, like I said, I've never met, and he's become like my social media rock. So no, I don't care what other people think anymore. I really don't. This life is about me, and about making a better life for my son, and one day hopefully re reuniting with my, my cubs, and just... Learning to accept what happened to me, deal with it, and make a better life for all of us. And to spend the rest of my life sharing my story. One day speaking on behalf of other victims and survivors and helping others. Using my past to help others. That is what I want. And if you can't support me, then you don't need to be in my life. And if that means being alone, then so be it. I've been alone my whole fucking life, especially these last eight years. So my point is, if you're there and you, you, 
You feel alone. You're not. Trust me, you're not. Share your story because this is the only way people are going to wake the fuck up. I cannot tell you how many people I have written, I have emailed, I have tried to reach out to you, not just about my book, but about sharing my story, about what it is that I can do to help others. It, you know, how do I start my own campaign? All this. And I have never gotten one reply. I got a couple replies. And people always have something more important to do. What is more important than saving a life? Is money and, and fame and being a YouTube star or a social media star or a celebrity or, you know, starting a new business or whatever it is, is so much more fucking important than trying to bring awareness and helping not just not just women and children like you and me that have already suffered it, but there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of women and children being sold at this very moment, being tortured, raped, sodomized, beaten, degraded in the worst fucking ways, and you think doing something else is more important than helping with that, then I don't have time for you. And if that makes me selfish, then you don't have to be a part of my life. Because all I want to do, I don't ever, ever, ever want another woman, especially child, to ever have to fucking endure what I did. What countless other victims and survivors have. And they can't wait for you to finish doing whatever it is that you feel is more important. I get that y'all have families enough to live your life. But do you not think that that's what we, we wished, we dreamed for? We lost our families. I lost my children. I lost everybody. Because I couldn't handle with what was happening to me. So they just threw me to the wolves as some fucking no good junkie. And the children that are being sold and abused right now, you don't think that they want somebody to love them? That they want a family? What if it was your child? Your niece? Your nephew? Your cousin? Your brother? Your sister? Would it matter then? I, you know, this video wasn't meant to do this. And I'm getting angry and I don't, I don't want to do that. And I'm sorry. But this is why I'm doing this. Because people need to wake the fuck up. This is not on the news enough. This is not talked about enough. People are just turning a blind eye because it has become so normal to them. What do you want me to do? I want you to give a shit. That's what I want you to do. I want you to care as if it was one of your own children or family member. Because I promise you, one day, it will be. The way things are going, it is ha there is not a person in your circle, in your family, that has not been through it. Or that won't go through it. Because it is becoming that bad. Because nobody gives a shit. Nobody is making it a priority. Rant over. So, those of you who feel like no one cares, believe me, I know exactly how you feel. But I do. And you can call me. You can message me. You can email me anytime, day or night. I can't tell you how many people that I've tried to reach out to. And I get they have hundreds of thousands or some of them even have millions of followers then you know what you obviously have the money to hire people to answer these people for you if you can't get to all of them then get somebody to help you because that's why so many people think 
that nobody cares because you're not answering them. You got your face in the spotlight saying that you care and you want to help. But what are you doing about it? Why not answer the actual victims and survivors and let them be the face? Or is this just about fame to you? And yes, I'm talking about a few different people that I've tried reaching out to myself. And they say they're, they're, they're the face of the Me Too movement. So what are you doing about it? Who are you reaching out to? Because from what I've researched, not a whole lot. Because there's a lot of people like me that feel the same way. Don't give up. Don't give up, guys. Please. I am here for you. And I am just one of many that are here for you. Because there are people out there that do give a shit. We do. We are sitting here in our home, all alone, trying to live each day without wanting to give up. We know what you're going through. That's why we need to get through this together. We need to band together. We need to be together. And we can beat this if we do it together. We can't do it alone. We have to matter. We have to make people believe that we matter because we do. Because we do matter. We do matter. We matter to our children. To, to the women and children out there who are depending on us to bring them home. So no, I won't give up. Because every time I go to sleep at night, I picture children going through what I went through. And I can't have that. I can't, I can't sit back and do nothing. I can't let my fear get in the way of that. We have to bring them home. Whatever it takes. So please, 